This is The Yaw 2, VR's next generation motion simulator. This futuristic looking chair makes you feel like you're driving a car, flying airplanes, or even spaceships at the comforts of your house. This time around, there are even more use cases like for work. So the team behind Yaw 2 came all the way from Hungary to visit us so that we could test it out and make this video. Keep in mind though, this is a prototype, so this is not a review, instead I'll share my hands-on first impressions and the review will come later. We'll talk about specs, improvements and new features all while showing you the Yaw 2 in action during gameplay. There's a lot to take into account this time so I'm going to do my best to explain this as well as possible. As always, timestamps are below and I'm Cass. Consider subscribing if you like VR and now join me beyond reality. So Yaw VR isn't new in the industry. They had a successful Kickstarter three years ago of the first version and this was an exciting product because it was the most compact and affordable 3 dof motion simulator. We reviewed the first version in the past and we liked it a lot. That one delivered what it promised and it made specific experiences much more fun. However, there were some issues and in the end we thought it was more suitable for certain game genres. With the Yaw 2, the team improved upon this and adds more features. So let's start with specs. Here it is in all its glory in our living room. It's pretty big in a small condo like ours so keep in mind that you need some space. If you want full 360 rotation, y'all recommends at least a diameter of six and a half feet but you can easily tell the biggest difference with the first yaw here right the design <laughs> obviously the design is now much more aesthetic it has a futuristic design and in my opinion it looks like something that came straight out of a spaceship and as a big nerd myself I love that. There are fewer plastic parts too. The version I tried here was almost entirely made of aluminum, although the Yaw team has told me that the final standard version may get more plastic parts, while the Pro version will retain this stronger structure. This isn't finalized yet, however, if this is what the Pro version will be like, then I like it. The build quality feels really sturdy. And also this chair has gone through heavy testing, even wind and rain to get here on the floor 7 and it's it still works, so I think that says something. Internally, the motors and the technique behind the movement have changed as well. It doesn't use the Omni wheels anymore, which is what caused friction damage if the first chair was overweight and overheating. This should not happen anymore as the Yaw 2 now uses cock wheels. This allows for greater transmission of force and it does not slip. It's also more precise because all motions are separated and each have their own motors. A big plus is that it does not need an external tracker anymore for motion compensation. So it will now work with all major VR headsets, even those with inside out tracking. On the first yaw, people, me included, also put counterweights at the back to uh, balance heavy racing wheels and other peripherals. There wasn't a good place to do that on the first version, but on the yaw 2, the team has taken that into account and said that they will have a place for these counterweights at the back here. That's nice if you still want to do that. Okay, now versions. The Yaw 2 comes in different versions. The one I tested was the standard version, which includes motors of max 500 watts power, adjustable foot holder, adjustable basic desk. Keep in mind though that both the foot holder and desk isn't the final version in this prototype, so it may look different in the future. It will also have static LED lights, which are changeable in colors, and it will include the software needed. There will also be a pro version which will include all of the standard version features and more it has more powerful motors 700 watts instead of 500 it will also include a smart plug for connecting fans and wind effects so to make it even more realistic, a built-in electricity outlet and effects for the LED lights, built-in casters, those are foldable wheels, and then the most interesting of this version is maybe the built-in USB input that passes through your PC so that you can plug in your accessories like racing wheels or yokes directly on the yaw. This makes cable management much more manageable. Next to this, there's also an arcade version for 
business owners, which includes programmable buttons and arcade software. Interesting for arcades, but not needed for us consumers, I think. Another big difference is that the Yaw 2 is built to be modular. I like modular hardware as you can personalize the products so you can pick the parts you need, leave out what you don't and get the best price for you. The first modular part is the replaceable chair on top so you can put any gaming chair on here as long as it has a flat bottom. So this DX Razer I have here, yes, that would work as well. If you don't want to put your seat on it, you can buy your seat made from a basic fabric and it also has programmable LED lights that synchronizes uh, nicely with the platform. But not only the top part is uh, modular, but also the bottom. In the standard version, you get the two DOF platform. So it's able to pitch and roll. The maximum motion range of the pitch is 70 degrees and the roll is 40 degrees. The motion speed is uh, 160 degrees per second max. If you want to spin around in 360 degrees, you have to get the yaw platform that adds a second platform below. The max speed it can spin is 360 degrees per second, which is really fast. Coming in the future as well, y'all plan on making another platform, another module called the Gravity Platform, which gives the simulator up and down movement, also known as heave or elevation. Very interesting. They are still working on this platform though, so it's not available yet. And I could not test it yet, unfortunately, but you can get it later as a standalone add-on. You can also get the built-in casters as a separate add-on if you get the standard version. So I think that covers all the features and add-ons, but there are also new features and use cases. The team says you can use it for work and relaxation too. These are mostly software features like posture correction assistance and a built-in timer for when you need to eat sometimes too, you know. <laughs> These features are not finished yet, so I haven't checked them out yet. However, I will include it in the full review. Depending on what you need, the Yaw 2 will cost between around 1100 to uh, 2300 US dollars. These are current Kickstarter prices though, so this may be more expensive in the future, but the most basic version, so the 2 dof without a seat, will be the cheapest, but then you have to get your own seat. And if you want a 3 dof simulator with all the pro features and a uh, seat, <laughs> it will be close to 2300 dollars. This is shipping excluded, since it will be shipped from Europe, shipping to the US, is $300 extra, so do keep that in mind. So I cannot talk about the hardware setup yet as the prototype was already assembled, so that will come in a later video. Software is the same as the previous, y'all, so you will recognize it if you own the previous one. There's a phone app, which is what you use to control and to troubleshoot the y'all via a Bluetooth and Wi-Fi connection. On PC, there's the game engine that uh, you need to install your PC and it synchronizes the chair with your PC and a game. You connect the chair to the software via Wi-Fi or you can also use a network cable. Also, all games that support the first YAW will also support the YAW too, so that's good news. During my day with the YAW 2, the software setup did take the longest. The team ran into some issues. Uh, I wasn't the one doing the setup, so I can't say anything about that, unfortunately. But there are some improvements with the previous YAW. You had to recalibrate the device each time you wanted to play and you had to take some stuff into account. This is not necessary anymore with the YAW 2, so there are definitely lots of improvements and streamlining of the setup here, which is really good news because that was all also my feedback in my previous y'all review. They did tell me that the software is still being worked on, but let's move on to the fun stuff. So my impressions of what we actually tested in the games and what it feels like. So I've been showing you these games already in this video, but uh, the first game that we've played was Epic Roller Coasters, a native game on Quest. So the y'all was connected to the Quest directly and needed no PC. This is by far the easiest way to try out the y'all and so much fun with that game as the rumble in the coaster makes it feel real so real i even felt some uh, butterflies going down at high speed it can get pretty 
intense, but it's very cool. I've also tested Dirt Rally 2.0 via Steam VR. This was streamed wirelessly via virtual desktop to the Quest, and I was using the Logitech G920 wheels here. These are heavy racing wheels. They were too heavy for the previous Yaw, but on the Yaw 2, this is completely fine, which is good news. And this surprised me a little. The motion compensation worked well too. As mentioned before, you don't need a separate tracker anymore, which makes it a ton easier. So there's some uh, software magic going on and it worked well. So that's good news. You now just pick the Yaw 2 chair as the tracker in the motion compensation software. Once that was set up, I only had to resend the ones and it was good to go. In this game, I felt the acceleration, braking and differences in the road. Grass felt different than the dirt road itself. I also felt the impact when I bumped into mountains or looped around, which often happened as I'm a terrible racer, but again, it just felt realistic. I've also tested X-Plane 11 using a Logitech yoke system, and I think this was my favorite game to try out as it just felt amazing. Particularly this part where I had to lift off, so I would drive on the runway and feel the vibrations and rumble of the ground, which were pretty heavy, and then the moment when I lifted off, that rumble went soft and only a slight vibration remained, and that was of the airplane motors. It was exactly like how it felt sitting in an airplane. It felt quite surreal knowing that I was doing this while at home. Response times were great. I don't know this, the latency is probably there, but when in the game, you won't feel it much. So it's just almost one-on-one. -on -one. Tracking was good as well, and I was pretty surprised that we didn't need any external trackers. Do I feel much uh, difference when compared to the first Yaw though? Well, not really. The team said that the response time should be faster, better, stronger, but it wasn't noticeable to me. I think I need to test both versions side by side to be sure, which I'm going to do in the future. There is one difference though that you can feel for sure, and that is the seat, which is just much more comfortable. It's also just easier to get in and out, so that's a plus, as when I play games on a motion simulator, it's usually for a couple of hours. Now, there are some things to keep in mind if you are planning to get one. Motor power is not as important as it seems because it's not often that you need 100% of that power. Yes, you can set it. Frankly, it just gets very intense if you put it really high. I usually have it between, I don't know, below 50% and this is the same for the Yaw 2. Everything was set on 30% of power and it was more than enough for me. However, this is different per person. For example, if you weigh 280 pounds, which is about the max load of the Yaw 2, by the way, you may need that extra power. Then the Pro version's built-in USB input will be super handy for cable management of peripherals, but only if you want to rotate 360 degrees. Usually with racing simulators, you don't need to spin 360 degrees, so the standard 2 dof platform may be enough for you then. If you like flight simulators though, it would be nice to have that uh, Yaw movement too. So which version you should get comes down to what you play often and just personal preference. There's a lot of information in this video, but I know there are many simulator fans out there. So I hope I could help out with this video in the upcoming months. A full review is definitely coming once they finish the product. So let me know your questions and what you would like me to test in the comments below. And uh, I will for sure take it into account for the review. Also, let me know if you are going to get one and what you think. If you need more info, you can check out the Kickstarter. I'll put that in the description too. And thank you for watching. We really appreciate you. Leave us a like if you like what we do and uh, watch more over here to support us. A special thanks go to our champions, especially these paid ones down below. And I say, fine avond. VR on.